Hey guys, this is John. This week's chess training tip comes courtesy of a Twitter user. So Dennis on Twitter asks, Hey John, in a position like this, is g4, knight takes g4, h takes g4, bishop takes g4, enough compensation? Does it expose the white king side? And he's got this great screen grab from one of his 10 plus 0 standard games. Presumably he tweeted this to me after the game was complete. Obviously I wouldn't recommend tweeting at someone during a chess game especially a serious game like this, 10 plus 0. But Dennis seems like a forthright guy, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> uh, great question, Dennis. This is a scenario that happens a lot out of E4, E5 openings, and you can encounter this with both white and black, so it's important to know how to evaluate it. So let's go to the chess.com board and properly flesh this out. Here's the position that Dennis was in, and his opponent just played G4, I assume attacking the bishop on h5, trying to break the pin on the knight on f3. And Dennis has to figure out whether to retreat the bishop to g6 or to sacrifice here in the hopes of keeping the pin of the knight on f3. So first thing I want to note, if you're considering a sacrifice like that, it's almost always going to be the knight that you're sacrificing versus the bishop. If bishop takes g4 instead, material-wise it works out the same. You sacrifice a minor piece, a three-point piece, for two pawns. But the knight is not doing anything in particular here. Whereas when you sacrifice and wind up with the bishop on g4, then you can at least say that you're keeping this pin. And in fact, all of your compensation will hinge on whether you can exploit that pin. And that's how you evaluate whether this sacrifice is worth it or not. Can you come down hard on that pin piece, increase the pressure, and make it very difficult for your opponent to defend? And here, unfortunately, the answer is no. I don't think this sacrifice is sound. I don't think you'll find any strong player who would make this sacrifice in this exact position. The reason is, it's just too easy for white to deal with the pin. In this position, there's at least two ways I see that white can easily negotiate it. One is bishop e2, which puts a, a piece in between the white queen on d1 and the white knight on f3, so the pin is broken. Note that if black gets another move, they would like to play knight to d4 trying to attack the knight on f3 twice. So bishop e2 just ensures that if knight d4 is played, white can take, uh, not having to worry about losing their queen. So bishop e2 is one easy way to do that. Also, I think knight e3 is a good response. That would attack the bishop on g4. Black is not interested in trading on f3. You don't usually sacrifice in order to just make equal trades thereafter. So bishop takes f3, queen takes f3 would be a-ok -okay by white. And black cannot even play bishop h5 here to keep the pin because white has rook takes h5. So sadly for black's attacking aspirations, knight takes g4 is not going to work out very well because white can just too easily deal with the pin knight on f3 thereafter. They just break the pin right away with bishop e2 or knight e3. Now let's look at a scenario where this might actually work and in fact did work in a very famous game. So we are going to look at a game Solway versus Shigorin from Kiev, 1903. This is an old school game. Shigorin was a great attacking player, had some famous battles with Steinitz. His games are always fun to review. And he was black here in this game. I'm going to go through the opening kind of fast. It was an E4, E5 game. Two knights defense. Nothing too crazy yet. Here, Shigorin pins the knight on f3. He beats his opponent to the punch. Note that white has not played bishop g5 yet. White plays bishop b5, black castles. Jumps the knight into d4. h3 is played. Okay, so here we get the circumstance where white goes ahead and plays g4. Very much like Dennis's game. And you could imagine Shigorin in 1903 sitting there contemplating whether to make this sacrifice or not. Knight takes g4. So in this case, as I already alluded to, the sacrifice is justified. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one, so after, oh, okay, sorry, he played bishop takes c3 first. I forgot to include that little detail. Note that if white were to take this bishop on h5, then bishop takes b2 could be played. Black comes out at least a pawn ahead. So they inserted these moves. So I think there's a couple reasons why this is good here. So one, note that white cannot easily put their bishop on e2 to break the pin. I mentioned bishop e2 as a resource that was present in Dennis's game. Here it's not present. That bishop is just hanging out on b5, not doing anything in particular. 
So there's no move white can play right now that just gets him out of the pin. And moving the queen is not going to help either. Like queen d2 would just drop the knight. Uh, there's also not a knight e3 type move. So that pin is there to stay and white has to deal with it. And the second big factor is black has a very effective way to increase the pressure on the knight. And this is a bit hidden, but it's a good resource to remember if you get, ever get into similar situations. Shigorin's idea is to push the F pawn and try to get his rook on F8 involved in the attack on F3. So if he gets another move, he's not going to play something like Queen F6, which would attack the knight, but allow white to bring their king up and defend. He's going for F5. Then if he can trade on E4, that rook is uh, bearing down on F3 with decisive effect. And white has a hard time dealing with that. So Solway played d4, looking to get the bishop back to e2. But Shigorin just barrels ahead, f5, attacking the pawn on e4. Note that if e takes f5 here, e4 is a very good answer. And the pawn even joins in the attack, pinning the knight. So instead, white opted to play bishop back to e2, looking to break the pin. But now Shigorin capitalizes, f takes e4, attacking the knight. Knight d2, knight has to run away. Take. Queen takes. Black is still down material, but check out that king. It's missing the safety of the h and the g pawns now. And Shigorin was very quick to punish white for the absence of those pawns. So queen g5 check. King h1. And rook f4. Setting up this column checkmate. Hallway mate, if you will. With the queen and the rook on the g and the h files. White has no good defense and therefore resigned. So Shigorin's decision to play knight takes g4 in this case was justified because he was able to quickly follow up the attack on the knight. White was not able to break the pin as easily as he would like. Also, the fact that white was castled kingside, I think that's always going to nudge the sacrifice up in value a little bit. So if you're ever considering that sacrifice, everything hinges on whether you can increase the pressure. And who knows, maybe this f-pawn idea getting the rook involved, or maybe the fact that your opponent's king is on that wing will help make that decision a little easier next time around. So thanks for the question, Dennis. And if you guys have questions for me, you can tweet me, you can leave it in the comments here. Uh, I mentioned that I'll be taking examples from my students' games for this series, but also I'll, I'll look around on Twitter, maybe on Reddit, stuff like that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.